Well, good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Jason. This is Old Car Auto Guy, and today we're doing a couple little projects to old grandma here. We're gonna be installing some new rotors, as well as adding to the LED collection of lights on old grandma here. So stay tuned. So guys, what we're gonna be doing today is we are gonna be replacing the license plate light as well as the reverse lights on old grandma here. And with huge thanks, going out to our sponsor, Last Fit, and they have supplied us with a 194 replacement bulb as well as a 3157 replacement bulbs so that we can do this project. And just to remind you guys, if you are interested in some LED lights of your very own from Last Fit, if you use promo code OLDCARAUTOGUY10, you'll get 10% off your order. So let's get to installing these lights and just show you how easy it is on a 2004 Grand Marquis. So before we go too far, we always wanna give you a before and after of the light. So this is the basic incandescent bulbs that come with the car. And there's the license plate bulb up there, all yellow in color. And the idea is, is that we're gonna replace these so that they're a little bit brighter and aid us in backing up. So. Once again, here's the before, and we'll get to the after as soon as we install them. So, let's get to it. As far as replacing the license plate, it's just a couple of Phillips screws that are holding this plate in, and when you pull that out, the plug-in is gonna be right there. So, let's get the screwdriver and get this done. So this is just your standard 194 bulb, very common in most vehicles today, but now they're slowly being replaced by LEDs, just like we're gonna do. So the part number replacement for these bulbs are L-T10. So if you're going to Last Fit's page, you can go and look that up, and this is what they look like up close. And just like the other one came out, it just pushes in. Woo, just like so, and man, that is bright. So to install it, you just do the same thing in reverse. Now when it comes to these backup lights, those are accessed from in behind this panel. There is a hole in the back of the trunk, so you can just reach in there and give that socket a little twist. So again, they're just a push-in bulb, so we'll take the old one out and we'll replace it with the new one. Just like that, it's in. Let's go take a look at the difference between the new one and the old one. So here's the old one, yellow. And here's the new one in a bright white. That should help us back up some. Let me know if you guys like these LED bulbs in the comment section below. So now we'll go ahead and we'll do the other side, just the same as that one. And there you go, guys two very bright backup lights and one very bright license plate light. For those backup lights, there is the part number on that one. It's L-3157. Once again, you can go to lastfit.com and get your very own LED lights with the 10% off coupon by using promo code OLDCARAUTOGUY10. Now, let's get to putting some brake rotors on this car. So guys, the reason why we're doing brakes all the way around, at least rotors is because I'm getting ready to head to Pennsylvania by the time you guys see this video I will already have been there possibly even back by now depending on how the schedule falls. These rear rotors are getting quite rusty around the outside edge and the contact pad um, or contact area here is getting very very narrow. Now the pads look like they're fairly new so the last person that did this job uh, the rotors were probably in decent shape at the time, therefore they decided to opt for just pads. Now up front it's a different story. We are getting some pulsating out of the pedal when you come to a halt. Now these don't look as old as the rear ones, 
but nevertheless we're going to change them anyways to get rid of the pulsation and we will resurface the pads before we put them back on make sure the mating surface is perfect. So one thing I am not going to do is I'm not going to show you guys how to change brake pads and rotors. I'm sure you all know how to do that. So I'm just going to cut to the end where we're getting ready to put things back together and show you the difference between old and new. So guys, do you see the irregular wear on the bottom of this pad? That's because the rotor was a little bit rusty on the inside and wore an irregular groove. Now, if you guys follow Straight Six Fan on his page, you'll see that he just recently did the rear brake pads on his Project Low Fairmont. And one of the things that he did, he basically took a piece of sandpaper and sanded it uh, to the pad to get, to get rid of that irregularity. Now, one of the things that I suggested in this video is something that we do, is if you lay the sandpaper flat, you've got a flat surface to grind against. So this is what it looks like before. And this is the inside pad and what it looks like now. It looks like a brand new pad. So we're gonna do the same thing here, save ourselves a few bucks and having to buy a new set of pads and people are gonna say, oh, well, you're just throwing money away by grinding it. Well, maybe so, but I'm saving myself that money today. There you have it, folks. A couple of brand new pads, almost. Well, guys, it never fails. Everything goes smooth until you get to the very last rotor and it's stuck. I've been beating on this son of a gun for 20 minutes. I got a chip out of it here. I've sprayed penetrating oil around the hub two or three times, which is likely where it's stuck. I've even turned back the self adjuster on the parking brake, which is inside this little hat and uh, to try and release those parking brakes and nothing. So I think it's time to get out the torches as much as I hate using them, but uh, we'll see if we can't heat that rotor up and knock her off. So all it took was a little bit of heat. And that came right off there with a couple extra wax. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the video or not, but I'm gonna say it again. On the other side, we noticed that the parking brake pads were beat. And on this side, there's only a little stretch there. Let me show you. This is all that's left of the parking brake. As we come down here to the bottom, there's absolutely nothing. So these parking brakes have been rotting away for some time. My inspection is coming due here at the end of September, and uh, so I'm gonna have to get those done. But for now, we're just gonna put the new rotor on it and get things back together so we can go home. As you can see, she's getting dark out, but it'll be a good time to test out those new backup lights. So guys, anytime that you do any caliper work or brake work on your vehicle, once you get everything back together, before you go and back your car out of the garage or down your driveway or whatever, one thing you always need to remember, pump up that brake pedal because you've pushed those pistons back and they're not coming back on their own. So the very first time you put that in gear and roll out, put your foot in the brake, you ain't gonna have none. So word to the wise, trust me, we know. I don't know guys, what do you think about that? I think they're pretty awesome and backing up, they give a ton of extra light. So like I said before, if you guys are interested in getting your very own last fit LED bulbs, check out their website right here and use promo code OLDCARAUTOGUY10 to get 10% off your purchase price. So guys, this beard is sponsored by Sussex Beard Oil. Long time supporters of this channel and this beard, as dirty as it is right now, full of grit and grime, they still sponsor it with lots of products. Guys, check out your very own stuff at sussexbeard.com. Car Guy and Six Fan show every Thursday evening. It alternates between myself and Straight Six Fan. You can check out his page at the uh, second link in the description box below. The first link is Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts. Get your very own. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again real soon.